Um, I need three documents in front of me, and they're the three filings of Ms. Merchant. Three filings? Three filings. Does anyone have the three filings of Ms. Merchant? Does the court have the three filings of Ms. Merchant? When you say the filings, you mean like the pleadings? The pleadings, yes, Your Honor. Okay. I think we could locate those for you in the supplemental. I want the one filed on January the 8th, the one filed immediately after we filed ours, and the final one. If you want to take a break to get them, I can make a copy. I think we have one. You know, the only copy I have is going to have my notes on it. So if we don't have a clean copy. We have a five minute break during let's all take the documents. So. All right. I'll sit here and wait for them. Yeah. Who's, did we elect someone who's actually making the copy? You got it? Okay. This crosses it. Do you swear me, Your Honor? You might you say, whomever would like to. You got Deputy Scott, you should. Well, let's go wait a minute. Let everyone get situated and then we'll go back on the record. Sir. Back on the record, Deputy Scott, if you could swear in our next witness. I would, and I do apologize. Anna, do me a favor. I'm going to make some media class. After you swear in, I'm going to make some media class. If it's swear, you can go ahead and swear in, so I don't hold it to court. Yes, sir. District, District Attorney, Fani, F-A-N-I, last name is Willis. Um, Ms. Willis, when, how did you know to come into the courtroom right now? Because there were people I was pacing in my office. Okay. And um, I heard someone yell, his testimony is done. Um, it only made sense to me that I would be your next witness. And I've been very anxious to have this conversation with them today. Okay. So I ran to the courtroom. So as soon as um, you heard that Mr. Wade was done testifying, that's when you just assumed you would be the next witness? It only makes sense. Um, did you listen to any of the testimony? I've been in my office pacing, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you listen to any of the arguments? I did hear the, the arguments this morning. It's ridiculous to me that the, you lied on Monday, and yet here we still are. And I did listen to that argument. Um, um, all right, so that was it, just the argument, no testimony. Right, I listened to the argument this morning where Adam Abadi, I thought, did an excellent job pointing out how dishonest you were with the court on Monday. And um, I'm actually surprised that the hearing continued. But since it did, here I am. Great. Um, so let's talk about, first let's just talk about what you did in preparation for today. Um, did you meet with Mr. Wade at all? Once the, mo once the motion was filed, did you meet with Mr. Wade and talk to him about the motion that I filed to disqualify you. On January, this first January motion? But, yes. I don't know if you could say talked about. Um, I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman. Me, not so much. Okay, but my question was, did you have a conversation with him? I didn't him? have a substantive conversation. You did not? I read this motion skimmed it more of so and um i've probably said some choice things to him about some of the lies they were told okay and then printed in the media because you know we used to be in a day and time where you had 60 minutes and people did stories and they verified information um and you had this great reporting but it seems today that a lawyer writes a lie and then it's printed for all of the world to see well, I just want to make sure that you answer the question I asked, though. So my question was... I'm going to object. I've been asked to answer. Overruled, Mr. Um, I told you what happened. I read the motion. I am sure I told him what my opinion 
of it is. Okay. And past that, we had no substantive conversation. You did not. Okay. Is there um, something you didn't understand? No, I just wanted to make sure that, that okay. you did not have a meeting with him in the conference room to discuss the motion. Right. Next question, no. Ms. Merchant. So in the, in the conference room of my office, within this week, you produced some financial document. That financial document was given to me, some thing, and I'm not even sure it was given it to him by me or Mr. Abadi gave it to me. Um, and I think he showed me a document in our conference room. But as far as a substantive conversation, I would not have, I don't believe I've had any conversation with him that is substantive related to this. Okay. Um, I have had conversations with him um, since you filed the motion, but they wouldn't be substantive to this. He sent me uh, very nice uh, sermons that, that have been done. And so we've had conversations about, did you listen to that sermon? You, you know, things of that nature. And I would say they were in relationship to this because I think he did it to be kind. Um, let's start back in 2019. Yep. So um, you and Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at a conference? That is correct. And I think in one of your motions you tried to implicate I slept with him at that conference, which I find to be extremely offensive. I stayed at that conference. Mr. Wade was my teacher. I did not meet him when he taught the class. I was standing outside talking to Lisa Reeves, who is a judge. Me and her were just having a conversation. Mr. Wade walks up, I think they hug each other, they have some brief conversation. She introduces us. Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object. We kind of thought that when you ask a question, you can answer the question, not a speech. So I object to the speech. But I agree. I'm able to explain my answers. I believe she's able to explain her answer. That's, that's, Ms. Merchant, that's okay. I can handle it. Ms. Willis, I'll ask you to listen to the answer, or excuse me, the question, and keep the answers confined to the question as best you can. I think you'll have more than enough ample opportunity on. Uh, when the state was well, it's able to highly offensive when someone lies on you and it's highly offensive when they the try judge. to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them and i take exception to it all right well miss willis she'll be have the opportunity to explain all of that when it's the state's turn to ask more open-ended questions yeah. miss merchant thank you judge um so again my question was you all met at that conference though right we did the meeting okay. he as i stated he taught the class i did not actually meet him when he taught the class i walked out of the class and I'm not sure if it was that exact class or we had went to lunch, but we were standing in the vestibule, like outside of the class. Me and Judge Reeves were having a conversation. She had worked at a law firm I worked at back in 1996. We're getting way afar. I mean, I don't mind her explaining her answers, but I literally just asked if they met at that conference. She's explaining how she met Mr. Wade, which was exactly the question asked by Ms. Merchant. It was. These answers are more than appropriate. Um, Ms. Merchant, if you want more concise answers, Perhaps you could lead the witness. I will. Thank you, Judge. Um, isn't it true that you met Mr. Wade October 2019 well, at the object. judge's conference? We haven't gotten to the point where Ms. Willis should be treated hostile in this I think well, we have. I very Mr. much Willis. want to be here, so I'm not a hostile witness. I very much want to be not here. Not so much that you're hostile, Ms. Willis. It'd be an adverse witness. Your interests are opposed to Ms. Merchant's. Thank Ms. You. Merchant's interests are, per are contra contrary to democracy, Your Honor, not to mine. All right. Let's judge, proceed. I we can, keep, that we, we can keep things moving. Ms. Murphy, thank, next question, thank, yeah. please. Um, okay, so we've confirmed when you met. Um, after that, isn't it true? No, I, I need to explain this, and I think I get to explain my answers. When I met him, Judge Reeves introduced us. He handed me his business card. I'm unsure if I handed him my business card, but we exchanged information. He said, if you ever need any help, give me a call. And he walked to the parking lot. Um, so after, after that... You started dating shortly thereafter, correct? That's a lie. That's okay. one of your lies. Okay. Um, do you know Robin Yerdy? I, I know her as Robin Bryant. I, I knew her. Uh, so Robin did not go to my college. She okay. went to the college of, uh, she, I went to Howard University. She went to Morgan State. Uh, I met her through some people I knew. Um, in college, we hung out a bit. Not much because she was in Baltimore and I was in Washington, D.C., um, but we hung out a bit after college i lost contact with her i probably didn't see robin again until maybe seven or eight years ago a chance meeting here in atlanta but we did not have a consistent relationship from when i left college and came to emory law school here in atlanta but i eight to ten years ago um just by happenstance i ran into her so she was in atlanta you have been friends with robin for 30 something years 
Did you hear my answer, ma'am? Yes, and I'm asking if you've been friends with her for 30-something years. I've known her for 30-something years. We certainly hung out and party together in college. Um, she was from the D.C. area. She would come home and party together. Uh, wasn't close, but she was certainly in the girlfriends that party together. Um, and then, like I said, I ran into her about 10 years ago in Atlanta, Georgia. So but we didn't talk throughout that time period. I didn't see her. I didn't even know where she was. When I ran into her, I was surprised she was in Atlanta. And so, yes, I have known her probably since 1990, 1991, but we have not maintained a consistent relationship that whole time. For the last 10 years or five, whatever you'd like to classify it as, have you been friends with her? I have not spoken to Robin in um, over a year. I certainly do not consider her a friend now. Um, I think that she, you know, there's a saying, no good deed goes unpunished. And um, I think that she betrayed our friendship. So let's narrow it down, the timeline now. So my questions are going to be from the time period of 2019 until she no longer was employed for you, the last time you all talked. So all of my next questions are just focused on that time frame, okay? Yes, ma'am. Up until she left your office. Yes, ma'am. Um, during 2019, you all were friends, correct? Yes, we knew each other in 2019. During 2020, you all were friends, correct? We were, we knew, yes, we were friends during that time period. During 2021, you all were friends, correct? Yes. Okay. And <coughs> such good friends that when you needed a place to stay, you asked her if you could take over her lease. That's a lie. You did not, not move into her apartment? I did, but that's not the way you characterize it is wrong. I asked if you asked if you could take over her lease. Did I did you? not ask if I could take over her lease. Did you move into her apartment? I moved into her condo in April of 21. But the circumstances around that were that Robin met her husband. They wanted to move into a, another and separate place. She wanted to get rid of her condo. My father was living with me at the house. Because of this case and because of my stance on gangs, my life was being threatened regularly. My father urged me to leave our home. At the same time, as luck would have it, Robin wanted to give up her lease because she wanted to move in with this new man she met who eventually became her husband. And so as life circumstances worked, my dad was begging me to leave the house. He was afraid for me, afraid for his grandchildren. She wanted someone to take over her lease so that she didn't you know, have to pay a fee or get abandoned. And so I don't remember when, but probably March or April of 21, I move in and take over her lease. And did you pay her, her or did you pay the um, leasing agent? No, I don't even know who the leasing agent was. I paid her. You paid her. Did you pay her cash or did you use a card? Um, there were some times that I would give her cash, and there, but mostly I paid her via cash app. That would be the most convenient thing. So I would not only give her her rent, but then like when the utilities would come in, whatever the utility was, she might be like, I need 70 bucks, I need $100, whatever it was. And um, we never had a problem with money. I, whatever she told me it was, I never asked to see a bill. I never questioned her. I just gave it to her. What um, what percentage would you say you paid cash versus cash out? Oh, most the the vast majority was cash out. I, I don't app. know what percentage. I'm not going to guess that. But the vast majority was cash out. But there would be times she would say, you know, this bill came in at 70 bucks. Here goes 70 bucks. Um, did you have a monthly rent amount that you paid her? I can't remember. It was fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars. I can't remember what it was, and it would vary, which I, I don't understand to this day. But like I said, I, I never questioned her. When did Whenever you move she out? She said it was. That's what I paid. When did I you move abruptly out? moved out in February, uh, either late January or early February of twenty two. Of twenty two. Yes, February twenty twenty two. Is that what you said? January, February yeah. twenty two. I I believe it is January, but um. I paid her half the rent of February of 22 is what I remember. And um, cause I was offering to pay the whole rent even though I didn't live there, I didn't think it was right. Um, and she, I didn't, I ended up just paying her half the rent. Um, so that's after you moved out. You yes, said you paid her half of that. Okay. And um, the time that you said you had to move out of your house because you were scared, um, did your dad stay there at your house? I was, my father was concerned. Yes, we were both concerned. Okay, but he, he remained there. My father is 80 years old. He would have been 79. He was scared to death of COVID. You have to go back to when this was. My father is an older man. Um, I wanted him to move out. We had some discussions about him moving out. And what he decided was the risk of COVID was more dangerous than the risk of the people that were threatening. Um, typical man, 
more worried about his daughter and his grandchildren than his own safety. Uh, you'll get to meet him and you'll understand he, he doesn't scare too easily. So your grandkids or his grandkids were living at the house as well at that time? Well, I don't know how old your children are, but if, when you have adult children, they leave and they come back. They leave and they come back. So there have been t periods of time that they're there, or they come, they do whatever they want to do. Children do what children do. As long as their mother has a house, they'll come to it. Unfortunately, now the threats because of this case have gotten so extreme. I just pay a mortgage and no one lives there. Um, and that's what I was going to ask you. So when you moved out in, I think you said April 2021, you left your dad and your two kids at the house? My dad and my two kids were not at the house. No they were not. not. Okay, so they didn't still live at your house? My youngest daughter certainly did not live there. Okay. My oldest daughter would come back and forth. I can't say month for month when she was there or when she was not there. I know that she has been there um, post me moving out. At this time, no one is at my house. So at some point after you moved out for, for the safety reasons, your at least one of your children did come Ms. back. Ms. Merchant, to can we get to either the yeah. relationship or the sure. financial benefit? Yes. Um, so um, let's see. We were back at 2021. So you were still friends with Ms. Yerdy then. Um, were you also friends with Mr. Bradley? I don't. I've never been friends with Mr. Bradley. You've never been friends with Mr. Bradley? No, I don't. Um, I don't consider us to be friends. I certainly I don't dislike Mr. Bradley, but I don't consider us to be friends. Um, is he someone that you would have in your phone and you would message with? Uh, I might have text messaged him. Okay. Um, would you text message him and Mr. Wade on the same conversations? I don't recall doing that, but if it happened, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Okay, so that, that wouldn't surprise you, mm -hmm. the three of you. Okay. How frequently would you think that the three of you would have text, texted? Not very. I wouldn't think very often, but you're asking me to recall I don't even know what time period you're asking me to recall, but I, I'm not going to speak to that because I just really don't know the answer to that. And so I don't want to speculate as to how often that would happen. Um, but it's not out of my practice to text two people on one text message. So if you told me that happened and showed it to me, it wouldn't surprise me, although I have no recollection of it. But there would be some rec rec record of it in your phone or the phone records would have some record of those texts. Perhaps. Um, talk about, you know, you said that sometimes you paid Ms. Yerdy cash. Um, I don't when you I, went, I'm sorry. sorry, when you went on vacation with Mr. Wade, um, let's, let's just go one by one. Let's, um, let's start with the first one. What's the first time you went on vacation with Mr. Wade? I think the first time we went on vacation was around April of 22 and it's a vacation is a stretch, but I'm trying to be comprehensive. Um, I recall April of 22, his birthday is March the 18th. Um, so that would have been his 49th birthday. Um, I took him to like Tennessee for the day. I think we went to a museum. I think we might've stayed the night. I'm not sure, but I mean, Tennessee is kind of hard to call a vacation, but I just am trying to be inclusive. And it, like I said, I don't think, I know it wasn't more than a day. Um, so you didn't spend the night? I think that we did. That's what I'm telling you. I think that there's a possibility that we stayed that night in April of 22. Who paid for the hotel? I think I did. It was his birthday. Um, and would you have used a credit card? Probably maybe a debit. When I started dating Mr. Wade, mm -hmm. it was right around then. Um, that April 2020? Two? 22. Yes, 22. it was a, around there. I don't know, like, you know, it's not like when you're in grade school and you send a little letter and it says, will you be my girlfriend and you check it. I don't know the day that we started seeing each other, but it was early 22 is my recollection. Okay, early 22. And you all went to Florida on vacation as well? I don't recall going to Florida on vacation with him. You never went to Florida with Mr. Wade? We went to, when we went to get on the cruise ship, we went to Miami. Okay, that's the um, only time that you went to Florida with him? I think we went to Miami and spent the night. That's my recollection. Okay. I think we spent one night so that we wouldn't miss the ship. That's my recollection of our vacation. paid for that hotel? In Miami? Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. And how'd you get to Miami? We would have flown. 
And we've done that so that I'm clear. We've done that twice. I think one time we stayed, and I honestly can't tell you, did we stay when the ship left or did we stay when the ship came back? I also can't tell you. So there's two cruises out of Miami. There's one that's in that October time period that was with his mom. And then there was another that was a New Year's Eve trip. I know I paid for the New Year's Eve trip because the tickets were $6.97 each. And I thought this is ridiculous that the tickets are $700 to go to Miami. But when you travel during New Year's Eve, you know, they get you. Um, so let's let's just back up and talk about the first time that you went to, to Florida with Mr. Wade. Um, that was the time that you said you stayed in Miami at the hotel the first night? That's the time I told you. I am not sure. So I'm not sure of two things. So I want to make sure that my testimony is clear. I'm not sure if we stayed in Miami on the October trip. I'm not sure if we stayed in Miami on the December trip. I just can't remember that. And I also don't remember, so that the record is clear, I don't remember if the necessity was as we got on the ship or we got off the ship. But I do remember there was a night spent in Miami because either whatever, I don't remember. But I think that there was a night spent in Miami. That cruise is um, the one that you took in October, right? Ma'am, I, I, if you have a, a something to refresh my recollection, I'm intentionally trying to not be difficult with you, but I don't want to make up something. Right. I know that on one of those two trips, we stayed in Miami. I am not sure right now. You're asking me about... Oh, I think... I'm sorry. You misunderstood. I wasn't asking you which... I was not asking you which night you stayed in Miami. I'm asking if you took a cruise in October 2022 with Mr. Wake. Yes, and his mom. And his mother. That's what I was asking. Yes. Is that the first time you met his mother? Yes. It was on that cruise. And that was Royal Caribbean, I believe? You too. I honestly don't remember what ship. I know we've taken two cruises. I don't know what the ships were. Um, but he paid for the flight and the cruise on Royal Caribbean that time. So, yes, he paid. He is the original one that does it. He has something called Mr. Wade is a world traveler. Um, I'm not as versed as him. He's been to six of the seven continents. Um, and so he has both a personal travel agent and he also has a cruise travel agent. I don't know anything about either of those kind of travel agents. So he is the one that would book the travel, but we need to be clear when we're talking about just because he booked it doesn't mean, like I don't consider him having taken me any place. Let me just be honest. The only one that's ever taken somebody someplace is for his 50th birthday. I consider that I took him to Belize and I took him to Belize because um, you know, I don't want to discuss his personal business, but I'm happy Mr. Wade is still here with us. And I did 50 big, very big. Um, so still on that October Royal Caribbean cruise, um, even though but he had a travel agent. I'm sorry. If you do me a favor, hmm. I don't know what cruise ship, what time. That's so if you'll help me and say October cruise with mama or the New Year's Eve trip with his sisters, I'll be able to, we can no communicate. I just don't know which ship. October cruise with mama. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. He paid for the cruise and the flights for that trip. So he called his cruise agent and he booked that through them because he has a cruise agent. Right. He also has a regular uh, agent. I don't know the cruise agent's name. So I wasn't asking about his travel agent. I was just well, asking but if I'm he trying paid to, for those. He did not though. Okay. Because the reason I consider that he did not is I gave him his money back. And I was about so to I, ask that, but initially he paid for that. Yeah, he, he called his cruise agent. Like, I think they have his card on record. They do whatever. Okay, so initially he paid for the cruise and the flight to Miami and the Royal Caribbean cruise. And my understanding of that October cruise is like, it was a package the lady did for him. Okay. Um, so, and I'll get to the reimbursements and all that. I'm just trying to confirm he paid for the flight and the cruise in October. And I think that when you say things that way, I want this record to be Initially. abundantly clear that he calls his travel agent, he calls his cruise agent. They do whatever he tells them. He's like on a first name basis with these people. They do it. And then he tells me how much it is. And I give him the money back. I don't, just like you're asking me about the money with Robin. I don't do my friends like that. So if you tell me it's a G, then you're going to get $1,000. If it, Whatever it is, I didn't ever make him produce receipts to me. Whatever he told me it was, I gave him the money back. Isn't it true that he paid for the cruise and the, um, the flight on his credit card? I'm not asking about reimbursement or after. He used his credit card to buy the cruise and buy the flight, correct? I have no idea how he paid for it, okay. uh, if it's a credit card, if it's a debit card. But certainly he called his uh, cruise agent 
You know, like how many people have a cruise agent? He calls his cruise agent, tells them where they want to go. They tell him what's booked. And you have to remember, he didn't just, he paid for that initial was me, him, and his mother. Um, and then after that cruise, you all flew to Aruba and spent a couple of days in a hotel there, correct? Right. And his mother was not happy. He and initially we left her paid for that. He initially paid for that. For Aruba. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's talk about both of those. I know he initially paid for it. Did you pay him back? For the cruise and for Aruba. Yeah, I gave him his money before we ever went on that trip. You gave him cash before you ever went on the trip? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so when you got cash to pay him back on these trips, would you go to the ATM? No, lady. You would not go to the ATM? No. Okay. So um, Fulton County pays you direct deposit, I assume? Yes, Fulton okay. County and the uh, state of Georgia both pay me direct deposits. Okay. So the cash that you would pay him, you wouldn't get it out of the bank? I have money in my house. You have money in your house. So it was just money that was there? When you meet my father, he's going to tell you as a woman, you should always have, which I don't have, so let's don't tell him that. You should have at least six months in cash at your house at all times. Now, I don't know why this old black man feels like that, but he does. When we were growing up, my daddy had three safes in the house. So my father's bought me a lockbox, and I always keep cash in the house. Now, I don't do it to the degree that my father would do it, so he would probably be uh, ashamed with me but I always have cash at the house. That has been, I don't know, all my life. If you're a woman and you go on a date with a man, you better have $200 in your pocket. So if that man acts up, you can go where you wanna go. So I keep cash in my house and I don't keep cash as good in my purse like I used to. Um, I don't go on many dates, but when you go on a date, you should have cash in your pocket. So my question was, where did that cash originally come from? If it didn't cash come out of the bank? Cash is, uh, fungible. I've had cash for years in my house. So for me to tell you the source of when it comes from, when you go to Publix and you buy something, you get $50, you throw it in there. When It's been my whole life. When I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that. Like, to tell you, I just have cash in my house. I don't have as much today as I would normally have, but I'm building back up now. So you just put money in. It's a very good practice. I would advise it to all women. So you can't identify when you came into this cash or where the cash came from? I didn't say I couldn't identify it. No, nobody gives me anything. I am sure that the source of the money is always the work, sweat, and tears of me. What you asked me for is when did the money go in there? What I am trying to tell you is, so I got divorced in 2005 from my husband. And, and no, I, no, 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 it's important. You said, where did the money come from? And I need to tell you where the money came from. And so for many, many years, I have kept money in my house. That money in my worst days has probably only been 500 or a thousand dollars. At my best days, I've probably had $15,000 in my house at Kate. Cash. At all times, there's going to be cash in my house or wherever I'm laying my head. The money that you paid Mr. Wade, the cash, in October of 2022, you do not know where that money came from. I do know where it came from. It came from my sweat and tears. You know which job it came from. Did it come from Fulton County or did it come from a private job? It came from, I don't, I'm not a, what are you talking about? So it could have come from a, a private job because before I was DA, I was in private practice. So I earned money during that time period that's probably in there. You don't it know could have, what do you mean I don't know where it came from? I, I understand didn't. the situation. We can move on. Okay, thanks. Um, same with Aruba. You don't know where that cash came from either, right? Ma'am, you are mischaracterizing my testimony greatly. Um, I'm not going to allow you to mischaracterize my testimony. I know that I keep money in my house. The amounts of money I gave Mr. Wade, it was never that serious. I don't think I've ever handed him more than $2,500 in a reimbursement. So we're not talking about $20,000 in cash. I don't have $20,000 in cash right now. The most I ever gave him, I know I gave him $2,500 when we went to Belize because we went to one um, hotel and then we went to a second hotel. That $2,500 I actually gave him while we were still in Belize. I know that the Aruba trip, the one that you described with his mom, I think I gave him about $2,000 for that trip for like total. His mom uh, went to Aruba with you? The Aruba trip. So I consider that to be one trip. So okay. we got off of a cruise ship and then we went to Aruba, which is why I cannot remember is that the time that we had to stay in Miami to wait for the flight for Aruba. <laughs> So I consider that one trip, but we didn't like come back to Atlanta and leave. We went 
We flew down to Miami. We got on a cruise ship. We spent a couple of days with his mama. We came back to Miami. When we came back to Miami, either that day or the next day, we flew to Aruba. We spent a few days in Aruba and we came back. That was really one trip. Uh, even though we went two places, it was one trip. Um, so let's talk about the California trip. Now. Um, is that when you were moving your daughter out to California? When you all went, or did you have two trips to California? My daughter doesn't live in California. Did she ever live in California? I'm not discussing to you the location of my child. Um, so how many times did you go with Mr. Wade to California? Once. And you all stayed in Napa Valley and he paid for the plane tickets and the hotel? He paid for the plane tickets and the hotel. Um, and what did you pay for on that trip? I gave him much less cash that time, probably four or $500. And then I paid for uh, a bunch of stuff. I think we did two different wine tours that you do, which are pretty expensive. Um, I think I bought him. He likes wine. I don't really like wine, to be honest with you. I like Grey Goose. Um, I bought him a bottle of wine while we were there and the sippings that you do. I, I can't remember how many, like four or five different places you go. I remember we went to um, to this place that they do pairings. Um, that was the most expensive thing that I think that we did while we were there. So they would pair, uh, they, they would pair uh, champagne, chocolate, and champagne, chocolate, and caviar. It was a three, and it was like three different things. Sweden, Russia, someplace else. I'll make that up. But um, that that was the most expensive thing we did that trip, and I paid for I paid for that. You paid cash? For us doing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I, but I, that trip did not cost me a lot of money. I might have took like $750 in cash on me because we weren't gone very long. I'm just, and then I, I'd only asked if you paid in cash. I don't need to know the amounts. When I travel, I always take cash. Um, and is the cash that you keep in your house or do you keep it at the condo that you were living in? So at that point, it wouldn't be at my house. And I'm sorry if I was not clear. The money would be wherever I laid my head. So I wouldn't leave the money at the house. So if um, I was unclear, no. Money is going to be where I stay. How much did you pay for your trip to Panama? To where? Panama, I believe. I didn't go to I may Panama. Have the, I may have the location wrong. I never went to Panama. So Mr. after Way Cal went to uh, Panama with his frat brother. Oh, he went to Panama with his frat brothers. So tell me about. Let's see. So I want to make sure I've got them. I've got Belize. You already covered Belize. You covered the. So let me tell you our real trips. In October, we went with. Uh, we went on the cruise with his mom. We got back from the cruise with his mom, and we went to Aruba. I consider that one trip. Second trip, New Year's Eve. We went on a cruise to the Bahamas. That's the second trip. I want to make sure I get this right. Third trip, 100% on me. I think he might have spent $200 on that entire trip. Uh, we went to Belize. That was my trip. That was, you know, his 50th. And then Napa Valley, we went around May. I don't know the dates, but it seems to me like it was close to Mother's Day. And those are the only trips? Um, so that the record is complete. I can remember one time driving to, where were we? South Carolina and we met my sister for lunch with her man. Um, when was we didn't that? Stay the, I don't know, but we didn't stay the night there, but I guess people would consider that a trip if you drive somewhere and you come back. That was insane because it was like five hours to drive. We ate lunch and we drove right back. Um, I can remember, driving to some little town in Georgia. I don't even know where I was. Um, I had never been there before or after. There's some boat you can get on over to and there's like a slave thing. If that gives anyone any reference, we didn't do that. Um, I remember doing that. I remember driving one time to Charlotte. We had lunch with one of my very close girlfriends. And again, we drove to Charlotte, met my girlfriend for lunch and drove right back. So that's a trip. We didn't stay the night there, but I just want to be complete in my testimony. We drove someplace, had lunch, drove back. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember another driving someplace distant for um, lunch and coming back to Charlotte to see a girlfriend, to meet my sister uh, in South Carolina. We went by ourselves when I told you about that remote place in Georgia. We could have driven someplace else and had lunch and came back, but 
that's all that comes to my recollection right now. There could have been another place we drove and had lunch. My um, security team was very clear to me. I'm not to be out and about in Atlanta without them. And so for me to do something just very normal that a normal person would get to do, they weren't prosecuting this case, I got to drive four hours to do it. And that's what I was going to ask you. Your security detail, did they take you to and from your house? They take, well, so I haven't been able to enjoy my home. Condo, I'm sorry. In March. Of where you lay your head? Do they take you to and from where you lay your head? 99% of the time. Would they take Mr. Wade to and from wherever you laid your head? That has never in the history of ever happened, ever, okay? Your security so, team has never taken him? To, from my house? That's a lie. I'm asking another, if they've ever taken him anywhere. And I'm telling you that that's never happened. So your security team has never taken My Mr. Wade security anywhere. team has never taken Mr. Wade from any place where I have lived and brought him here. Never. Not once. Not ever. Have they ever taken the two of you together? To where? Anywhere. Well, we've left this building and um, for gone to lunch, but I go to lunch so rarely that that is a very rare occasion. I am sure... And let me be clear, it wouldn't just be Mr. Wade. So I'm sure my security team has taken me to lunch. Probably been a time I've left here, seven o'clock, gone to get something to eat. And I don't even know that they would have taken him or if he would have driven himself, but they've taken me to do that. But we're talking very few, very far in between. Most days I don't even eat lunch. And when I do, it's because my assistant has heated up some bag, something, and I, I eat through meetings and eat in my office. It's not a practice of mine to go to lunch. During the time period that you were dating, would your security team ever take you two together anywhere? No. Never? If there was a lunch that occurred that I just described, if there was a meal that I occurred that I just described, anything outside of that, and it needs to be very clear, not often, once, twice, because I want to be... Uh, over-inclusive, I'm saying once or twice. I'm not certain that it happened, but I'd rather be over-inclusive with you. So your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken when no, Mr. Wade. And, well, no, 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 look. I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So. My question was, do you have any problem? I object to getting any personal records of mine. We're not dealing with privilege through a witness. And I'm not, no, 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 I'm not dealing with privilege. What um, we had offered to put them in camera for the court to review, and I just want to know if she has any That's problem. That's not something you deal with with a witness. <clears throat> okay. Um, you have to file as part of your job something called an income and financial disclosure report, correct? That's correct. And you filed your first one. So you filed two today. Is that right? Is it two or three? I probably would have filed 21, 22. And maybe I haven't filed 23 yet because isn't it due like June of the next year? April, I believe. So you filed, let's see, you filed your first one. It looks like April 15th, 2022. And your second one, um, April 17th, 2023. Does that sound familiar? That, I don't remember the dates, but you're an officer of the court. I'm going to hope you're telling the truth now. May I, may I approach the witness? You may. Thank you. Um, I already gave the state a copy. Exhibit 20 and 21. Can you take a look at those? They're part of the certified records. <coughs> Can somebody bring me some? Yeah. <laughs> some guys are getting a little old. Yes. Okay. Yes, so ma'am. Those are the ones that you filed. This, yep, this looks like me for sure. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Judge, we'd move to admit 20 and 21. I think you need to delineate which ones. Which, which 20 ones is 2021, so it, it accounts for the time period, Your Honor, January the 1st, 21 through December the 31st, 2021. That is Defendant's Exhibit 20. Um, Defendant's <coughs> Exhibit 2021, it accounts for the time period, January the 1st, 2022 through December the 1st of 2022. All right. Any objection to Exhibits 20 and 21? Nope. No, you're not. No, you're not. Sorry. From other counsel? Admitted without objection. Yeah. Um, when did your relationship, your personal relationship with Mr. Wade end? Our personal relationship ended in um, this year. 
So let's be let's be very clear so that we don't mix words. I, I don't want to mix words in here. Mr. Wade is my friend right now. Um, Mr. Wade, I would say, has been my friend since 2020. I think he started out as like a mentor and a professional colleague. Um, he became my friend and somebody that I, I really respected. Um, I feel very indebted to Mr. Wade uh, for taking on the task of this job. And um, he is certainly my friend and one of the people that I respect the most. Um, so if you ask about a personal relationship, I consider myself to have a personal relationship right now, Mr. Wade. I consider myself to have a personal relationship with Anna Cross. I consider myself to have a personal relationship with Mr. Abadi. Mm -hmm. I consider myself to have a personal relationship with Andrew Evans. Okay, let me just so clarify that. I have a personal relationship with him as we speak right now. A romantic I don't think that's what you're asking. I think that's what you're asking. When did your romantic relationship with Mr. Wade end? My did it end? Me and Mr. Wade, um, we are good friends. Uh, my respect for him has grown over these seven weeks of attacks. Uh, we are very good friends. I think, but for these attacks, it would have been a friendship that as life goes, you would have stopped having. Um, I think that you have cemented that we'll be friends to the day we die. <clears throat> that, uh, let's, Did we just have an answer to the question? I'm, I can handle this, Mr. Sada. Let's she, have it. She asked about a personal relationship. She asked when the romantic relationship ended. That's the question. It sometime in, um, I'd say late summer of 2023. So I don't believe me in, um, so what, this is what you're really asking about. This is the salaciousness of all of this, right? No, I'm just uh, asking about your really, romantic relationship. When you stop I, dating, I, I'm asking. I, I think that me and Mr. Wade, so he's a man. He probably would say June or July. I would say we had a tough conversation in August. So that men in relationships at the end of physical intimacy, women in relationships when that tough conversation takes place. And where, um, when did he come to, I guess the condo, I'm not sure what you called it, condo apartment. Um, would he come and stay at that condo or visit you there? I'm sorry, visit you there. What condo, what apartment? I want to be clear. So not your house. I know you classified one as house and one as condo. So I'm trying to use those terms. So um, there's been more. That, see, what you don't understand is because of this case, I got to move. And so I, Ms. I Merchant, to, if you could ask a more precise question. Yes, please. Give me the time period. <laughs> Mr. Wade about. visits you at the place you laid your head. When? Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear because you lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in. Right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. no. This is the truth. Judge, and this it, is it, it is a lie. It is, is gonna, a lie. Right, Ms. Willis. You see. Mr. Sena, thank you. We're going to take five minutes. Thanks. Be back in five.
Ready, Judge? Thank you. We're back on the record. Before we proceed, though, uh, I advise everyone here, uh, this being a room mostly full of lawyers who have spent their lives in and out of a courtroom, we all know what professionalism looks like, what decorum looks like, and devoting ourselves to the rule of law and proper advocacy. I would urge everyone to keep those principles in their mind, starting with the fact that we won't talk over each other. And from there, we'll get through this. Ms. Merchant. Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> How often did Mr. Wade visit you at a place where you were living between 2019 and 2021? So you want to start with the lie that he lived with me in, in South Fulton in 2019, a home he's never been to? That's one lie you told in Judge, your document. I, no. You, Judge, I didn't ask her about that. Miss um, Merchant, I want you to ask a very precise question. I think she's saying and answering that he did not live with her. So why don't we break that up into smaller ever. parts? And I, I didn't ask about living. But you put in your, did, while we're talking about professionalism, no, while we're talking about professionalism, she put in three different documents he lived with me. Full opportunity to respond. In, in 2000, filed that with the court. In 2019. He's never been to South Fulton. In 2019, I lived in South Fulton. He has never been to my residence in 2019, ever, not once. In 2020, 2019, he's never been to your residence, any place. I lived in my home in South Fulton before I started getting the threats that were here, a house I paid for with my own sweat and tears. I'm no longer able to live there. But in 2019, I did. And in the two months of 2019 that I knew Mr. Wade, three months, the beginning of October, all of November, and all of December, Mr. Wade never came to my house in South Fulton. Let me help you out. I lived there in 2020. He never came to my house in 2020, let alone live with me, as you put falsely in these documents. In the first three months of 2021, when I could still enjoy my home, Mr. Wade never came to South Fulton, and it is certainly a lie that he lived with me. So in 2020, let's, so you said 2019, 2020, did Mr. Wade ever visit you at a place that you He resided? has never been to my home in South Fulton. 2020 was before I knew that a phone call was gonna be made and I was gonna have to abandon my home. As a result thereof, he never visited, lived at, came to, or has seen South Fulton. You qualified that with your home in South Fulton. I'm That's asking, where I lived in 2020. In 2020, did he ever visit you at a place that you resided? Okay. I don't understand. You're about to give me that. In 2020, so I lived in South Fulton. Okay. That's the only place I lived in South Fulton. That's before I had to abandon my home, Judge. All right. And at my okay. home in South Fulton, we'll break Ms. I never, he never came there, okay? So if you Ms. don't Wells. come someplace, you can't live there. Ms. Wells, that's, I'm going to have to caution you. That's going to be my the first time I have to caution you. We have to listen to the questions as asked. And if this happens again and again, I'm going to have no choice but to strike your testimony. So we need to break this down. Mr. Merchant's question, I believe, was... Uh, asking whether you lived anywhere other than South Fulton. I did not live anywhere but South Fulton, Georgia in 2020. That is before I began my prosecution of this case and I, it was my plan to only live there. Did Mr. Wade ever visit you at the condo that you leased from Ms. Yerdy? He visited that condo, yes. He did? Yes. Did he ever spend the night at that condo? No. Just visited? Yeah, but he did visit for sure. Did you ever go out to eat together, other than the lunches you talked about, in during 2019 or 2020? I would think that we probably went to lunch, but it wouldn't have been, let me think, 2019, I'm gonna say, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say we probably broke bread someplace in 2019. I, I don't remember it, but it seems like we would have broke bread sometime in 2019. So I'm going to say yes, although I have no recollection. Um, but it seems to me like I, I go out to eat and drink with pretty much everyone. So I'm going to say yes. 
So outside of the vacations that we've already talked about, did you ever go out to dinner with Mr. Wade? I, I mentioned to you that I'm going to object as to what time period. Like we're, we're asking very vague questions. I thought we were treating the witness as hostile under 611. We're no longer doing that. So we're going to go back and forth. We need to be more specific with our questions if we're going to treat her as hostile. <coughs> All right, Ms. Merchant, it's not so much. I think you can elect between leading and open-ended questions, but I think we are still wondering about, and I think we need to get back on track of focusing on the financial benefit or the relationship. And my next question about if you did go out to dinner, who paid when you went out to dinner? He paid. I paid. You both paid. Okay, so let me be real clear. We didn't say, oh, the bill is $102. You give $51, I'll give $51. I don't operate like that with my girlfriends. I don't operate like that with anyone. He caught the bill, I caught the bill. Whomever. Did you ever pay him through Cash App? No. You only ever paid him through cash? Well, yes. Uh, uh, we're talking about, I'm very confused You've never now. given like, Mr. Wade money through Cash App? No. The only money you've ever given him outside of a contract is cash. I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute, but I didn't give him money out uh, in a contract. What <laughs> happened, is, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid, and the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. And I will ask you about the contract in a minute. I asked you about cash. Did you ever pay him anything? And I'm trying to qualify my questions. I'm not talking about the contract with Fulton County that, that was paid. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about outside of that, did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I've only given him cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So you've if never we would go to time. dinner. Let, him, let her finish her answer. If we would go to dinner, I wouldn't give him <laughs> cash because he paid for dinner or I paid for dinner. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. Okay. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is $2,500, the least amount of money I've handed him probably between $500 and $1,000. You never wrote him a check? Ma'am, I don't have checks. Okay. Um, so you have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. So my question was, do you have I'm any proof? Is that what you're intimating right here? I'm asking if you have any proof that you paid him any I mean, of these The monies. proof is what I just told you. You have no written proof. Is that correct? So I have some, um, probably some transactions like in Belize. I probably spent $500 on my card uh, in Belize. I spent 800, I can't remember, 900 bucks on each of our tickets to go to Belize. I did the $700. I probably got some <coughs> minor expenses in Aruba that would be on a card. But for the most part for those trips, other than, so the two cruises, I gave him money for those before we ever left because um, they were pre booked Let me answer. Well, the, the, the question was if you had any written proof. And so... So I've answered you that I've had written we proof. We can move to the next question if you've answered if you had any written proof, and that was my question. Um, I, I want to make sure that we're clear that for the two cruises... Judge, and I asked if she gave him written proof. We're not going to talk over each other. Ms. Merchant, she answered your question, so... We can ask the next question. You can, Ms. Willis and Ms. Cross will have plenty of opportunities to let you clarify your answers when it's her turn. Thank you, Judge. Knowing your role as district attorney, you know that public funds are scrutinized and money is scrutinized and things like that. You understand. No, never, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You understand you're under a microscope. You have reporting requirements, all of those types of things. Um, you have no record other than your testimony of the money that you've given Mr. Wade. You've already asked that question. Let's keep going. Um, when you took office, you had a tax lien of $4,600. Did you pay that with cash when you <clears throat> made that tax lien hole? I probably paid through uh, <clears throat> however you pay. Okay. So, but you were saying that you had amounts of cash. You still had that lien in 2022 when you were dating <laughs> Wade and going on these trips. So the cash that you gave him, that could have been used to pay this tax lien off? You're going to tell me how to pay my bills? This is not relevant as it relates to why we need to pay Ms. Merchant, um, if you are you trying to establish that she was insolvent in some way? Um, I definitely was trying to establish that, that she did not have these mass amounts of cash that she's talking about, yes. All right. Re-ask the, re the question. Um, 
You had a tax lien in 2022, $4,600. Did you say I did? And you did not use this cash that you had to reimburse Mr. Wade to pay that off, correct? No. Okay. I went shopping too when I didn't pay it all. And you talked about, uh, you, you, gave an, you gave a lot of interviews to some authors of a book called Finding the Best, right? <laughs> I would not characterize it as a lot. I probably have spoken to them no, no, two or three times. My question is relevant as to. I, I think it's already come up that students' finances are discussed in the book. I'll overrule that. Thank you. Ms. Wilson, you can continue your answer. Well, it came up with Mr. Wade as it relates to hearsay statements that he was asked about in relation to what Ms. Willis may or may not have said in relation to an author. So it's not relevant to the testimony that's occurring. This time. I think Merch Ms. Merchant has said that it, inside the book she also makes statements as to her own finances, and that's at issue. So you gave interviews to the authors of this book, correct? Once or twice. Okay. And times, um, just to be comprehensive, I don't know if it was three times, two or three times, I think. You were quoted in the book, and I will give you a chance to say if this is a misquote. You were quoted, I really, when they asked you about if you wanted to run for office for DA, you were quoted, I really don't want to be financially effed up again. Do you remember saying that? So what that refers to, so that- My question first is if you remember saying that. I remember saying something similar to that, but I would like to be able to explain what that's, that's in fine. reference to. That's not um, in reference to anything else. It was a huge sacrifice to be district attorney in Fulton County, huge. I was doing just fine. I had a municipal court judgeship that was paying me a hundred something thousand dollars a year and like you got to show up twice a week it, easiest thing i've ever done in life i also had private clients that were um paying me to represent them so i was able to have a law practice and that um raising two daughters by myself there were times in life where things were hard and so I was telling people, I don't really run for DA. I don't want to run for DA. I'm in a good position right now. I got this easy job that I enjoy being the chief judge of the city of South Fulton. I'm making money at uh, the law firm. And I'm not sure that I want to make this sacrifice. And why does it always have to be me? Um, eventually, I prayed. I think that I was the appropriate person. I think that I did that. So when you're referring to that, what I'm saying is, I, why should I make a sacrifice again? And what I was not talking about is being district attorney. Once you get elected district attorney, you're, you're in a fine financial position. I make over $200,000 a year. What I was talking about is I ran for judge. When I ran for judge, I took $50,000 of my personal money out of my retirement. And that money ended up being lost. And I know when you bet on yourself, you're going to have to bet money on yourself. And so what I was talking about was not wanting to go through the personal financial expense of running for office. By no means did I think that I was going to uh, be financially in a bad position once I won. Let's talk about what I was up against because it's important to understand that comment. I had a district attorney who had been here for 24 years. And Judge, People, no, 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 this is her, it's very relevant questions. as to what my mindset was about this. So I'm trying to answer your question. So what I was saying is I... Taylor, solely to finance. Right, but it, it is about my finances. Right, about if I, I didn't, nobody put me in this seat. So I had already run for office once. I had spent $50,000 of my own money running and it was vamoose, nothing. And so when I'm talking to those offers, I'm talking about the contemplation of the sacrifice of the run not the sacrifice of once you become DA. The odds were against me. I was likely going to lose uh, the election based on who I was running against. So that needs to be in the, the appropriate context. Isn't it true that the authors also wrote, and you can dispute this if, if you'd like, um, that you were broke after that race? The 2018 race? Yes. Yeah, that was, that was a hard race. I wasn't broke like I didn't have any. So broke is relative to depending where you are, but uh, that hurt to lose that $50,000. So I'm sure my mental mindset was like, I just gave $50,000 away. Right. So they characterized it from their conversations with you that you were broke. You had poured your own money into the campaign and you weren't able to pay your own bills because of your, oh, I'm sorry, your clients couldn't pay their bills to you and you had a paltry array of family and asset forfeiture cases. It says you were trying to make it month to month. Um, is that an accurate depiction of your financial situation at that point? I would want to read that, but I, I don't. I don't remember clients not being able to pay their bills. Or may I approach? Judge? You can. You may. Page thirty. I have not read this book.
So, so like this fact here, her ex-husband Fred had run into a financial. I have no information about I didn't that. Ask about that. Okay. I just asked about if you were, if what they represent from their interviews with you that you were broke and that you had clients that weren't able to, to pay their bills. Can you show me where that is? Because this is where you put the tab. So that's where I read. Broke, couldn't pay their bills. Yeah, that that. Uh, I'm sure I characterized myself as broke as leaving that fifty thousand dollars. I don't know that I had a. Uh, her nascent law practice at Paltry Rev. Well, I didn't have Ms. Murphy. I, I didn't. I test. I thought I had a law practice. I, so this is not correct. I'm okay. sure it's just I, I. I didn't have any asset forfeiture cases. So I had one case where uh, they had took one of my clients' money at the airport. That's. I don't know if that's what they're care. I don't know. Um, Paltry Array. I did have family law cases. I guess that's what they're talking about. And I. Clients who couldn't pay their bills ain't clients, so no. So my question was just if this was a fair and accurate representation where it says you were trying to make it month to month at that point. No, I don't think that that is actually a fair and accurate representation, okay. but I am certain that after the 2018 election, um, I'm still not really happy about having given up that 50000 You know when you paid your tax lien? I don't. You don't? Do you know if you paid it? I know I've paid some taxes. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. Okay. Um, did you tell anyone at Fulton County Board of County Commissioners about your relationship with Mr. Wade? No. Did you disclose your relationship to anybody at Fulton County? No, I don't think so. Um, and as the chief law enforcement officer of Fulton County, I assume that you're familiar with the county code and warden ordinances. I've said we're not going to cover that in this hearing, Ms. Merchant. Um, I'm sorry, Judge? We, I th we said we weren't going to cover the uh, county regulations. Okay. And I, I, I won't. Um, let me ask you this then. So are you aware that you're required to disclose any relationship with someone that you contract with in Fulton County? I'm going to object to the court fire ruling that you made this morning. Would, would this be different because it's a potential for impeachment? Yes. What did you ask me? I'm so, um, Ms. Merchant, if you could re-ask the question. Okay. Um, <coughs> are you aware that Fulton County requires you to disclose any relationship with someone that you're doing business with? I'm not aware, and I'm, I know often that time things are confused with state constitutional officers in county, but I'm not aware. Okay. So it's not your. So it's your understanding that you don't have a duty to disclose the relationship. She's answered that question. Okay. Let's keep going. Um, Did you keep track of this cash that you paid him at all? What are you talking? I don't understand. Did you keep track? Did you keep a ledger? Did you keep track of it? So I've only given him cash, as I mentioned, three or four times. There's no ledger. This is friends handing money off to each other. So the answer is no. I, you think, and I think you've already asked whether there was any written proof whatsoever. And she's yes. answered that. Okay. So we've covered this. Let's move on. Um, Who are you referring to when you suggested that Mr. Roman's motion to disqualify was racially motivated? We already said we're not talking about the forensic misconduct that's been alleged. Okay. And, okay. and just so the record is clear, I don't believe I said that his motion was racially motivated, so I don't want that to stay there. I've never said his motion was racially motivated, so that, uh, that should not be Lewis, true. I think it would be best that. if we don't need to go down that road. Uh, we're going to save that for argument. Um, you once said that you would not engage with a personal relationship with anyone that worked for Fulton County. Is that correct? Uh, an employee? Anyone that worked for Fulton County. I think I said an employee. Okay. So that's the qualification you give an employee? You wouldn't I think that's the statement that I made. So if you want to quote me, quote me accurately. So it's your position because Mr. Wade was not an employee? Or it's your position he wasn't an employee, correct? Mr. Wade is not an employee, and he will tell you that over and over again. Judge. I'm sorry, the statement, just so I make sure I accurately quote you, what you said was you won't work, you won't sleep with people who work under you. Do you not consider Mr. Wade working under you? I consider Mr. Wade to be an agent. Agent? Yeah, right. an appointee is what I really will think of him as. Your point, whatever merit it has, uh, Ms. Merchant, is on the record. Thank you, sir. Next question. All right. Do we need any moments in, in a minute? Mr. Sadow. 
Yeah, I'm ready to go, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to try to ask you questions that you can actually answer without having to explain, okay? Yes, sir. My comprehension skills are pretty good, so we should do all right. We shall soon see. If I heard you correctly, you moved into what I will refer to as the Yurti condo in either March or April of 2021. Is that correct? Sometime between late February and April, yes. I don't just so we're clear, yes. But in that time period, you're you're in the ballpark. We're in the ballpark. Okay. And is that Yerti condo, would you say that it is in Hapeville? It is in Hapeville, yes, sir. And you moved in there for safety reasons? My father, uh, <laughs> yes, I moved in there. My, we were concerned. My father was terribly concerned about me continuing to live at the house. And it so that we're clear, people came to my house at 5 o'clock in the morning um, about the police brutality cases, saying I was going to have a wake-up call. Uh, there were security threats due to gang cases, and there were concerns due to the, um, that was at the very beginning of this, looking into that. And so for all of those reasons and what was happening, my father wanted me out the house, and um, begrudgingly I left. Okay, so the answer to the question was yes for safety reasons, correct? Those were all of the things that caused the safety concerns. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not questioning whether they are or are not safety concerns. I just asked that you moved into this condo, the RT condo, right. for safety reasons, right? Yes. Okay. At the time that you moved into the condo, be it from February to April of 2021, yes. was your father still living in your house? Right, because my father... I, that's yeah. all I ask you. But I, I get to explain the answer, sir. I, I don't know if there's an explanation. If I ask you, was your father still living at your house... The answer is either he was or he wasn't. Yes, but you are going to get to argue at the end of this, as we both I'm know. I'm not going to argue so anything. I'm going like to ask. I'm going to explain why. I'm going to so, okay. yes, well, because my father is an older well, gentleman. Well, he was worried about COVID, and he stayed. Well, I, I, Ms. Wilson, I'm going to have to say this second time. Whenever we have to put a pause, we stop testifying, okay? You don't have a chance to explain yourself. The question was whether your father was not staying there at the time and you're clarifying that in your answer as well you can have a brief clarification but it shouldn't be something that reaches well beyond the question all right mr sato you can re-ask the question we'll see where it takes us okay thank you was your father still living in your house at the time you moved to what i would refer to as a year t condo Yes, sir, he was due to his concerns related to COVID. Okay. The safety concern was that there was potential danger at your house. Is that correct? Yes, my address had been exposed. So, yes, there was concerns about potential danger at my house. Okay, so anyone staying at your house in the time period after you went to the Yerti condo was still in danger, correct? Yeah, well, no, no, no. I think you have to... Uh, it's your attorney, Ms. Willis. Um, sorry, Mr. Potty, your objection is speculation. Yes. To the question of speculation. whether someone was still in danger at her condo. I can read. Just let her answer the question. Let, let, or uh, Mr. Uh, Sadon wants to rephrase. No, I, I, I'm not I, sure. I was able to I've understand it. A, I've got the objection, and then I have. I'll withdraw the objection. Before. Okay. So, and I'm going to remember the question so I can answer it. Well, you, you can now that the objection's been withdrawn. Can you try to answer that question? Yes. But there's still a safety concern I was, for people staying at the house. I Yes, I was very concerned about my father still living at the house. However, if you have dealt with an older gentleman, he was not leaving the house, despite my urging him that I thought he should leave as well. He did not want to leave the house because he was particularly worried at his age about COVID. But that became a, a I don't want to say a... a I was not happy with that decision of my father's, but I can't ultimately make him leave. And he stayed there too long, in my opinion. Okay, thank you. During that period that you left to go to the Yerti condo, yeah. did any of your children stay at your house? So I don't, 
I don't think that they were there at that point. Certainly my baby wasn't there. I'm talking about this entire period. We're talking about, if I remember correctly, and you'll correct me, I'm sure, you said that you stayed there at what I would call the Yerti condo until January of 2022, correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm asking you in that period, which would be February to April of 2021, until January of 22, did any of your children stay at your house? And you don't have to yell at me. I'm able to understand. I, so I would ask you to not yell at me. That being said, I don't actually expressly remember, but I can tell you since I have left my home, there have been times my oldest daughter came in, but I can't tell you with certainty the time window that you've said if they did or not. And so I don't want to speculate to that, but there was some time that my oldest daughter came back, whether it was that period or after I left the Yodi residence, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. So the, if, if I continue to go into more detail on this, you're not going to be able to give me an answer of whether or not in fact, any of your children were still at the house or stayed at your house during that time period, correct? What I can give you clarity of so that we are clear is from the time I moved out in February-ish of 2021, um, after I left there, there was a time period that my oldest daughter came back. But if you're asking me, was it in that window or after, I just don't have a recollection of that because, you know, your kids come and they go. And so I don't remember the specific time period, and I apologize for that. Did your children ever stay with you at the Yerti condo? Uh, like maybe a night, okay. like for a girl's night or something, but live with, no. Okay. Did anyone else stay with you at the Yerti condo, including Miss Yerti? Never. Miss Yerti never lived in the condo. She met her <clears throat> husband and they moved. They weren't quite married, but they moved. Nobody ever lived with me in the condo. That was a my a word was period. My word was stay, not live stayed with you at the condo i guess i don't understand the distinction but no one ever my i think my baby's my oldest child i think she spent one night with me maybe my oldest and my youngest but i think that whole time i was in that place other than that one night i don't think anyone ever um that's a very lonely period in my time life i don't think anyone ever spent the night other than maybe one night i remember a picture of my baby sitting on the couch in that place and I'm thinking she spent that night, but just a very lonely time in life. Okay, we'll stay with the lonely theme just for a minute. Did Nathan Wade visit you at the Yerti condo from the time you moved in until he was hired on November the 1st of 2021? So I moved out uh, of that condo, but during that time period, he, yeah, I'm sure he came to visit. Uh, he came to visit. I can remember us going, I think the restaurant's Lickety Split. I can remember him picking me up, going to Lickety Split and eat, ordering some food and coming and sitting at my table and eating. So I remember times that he visited me at that condo. Yes. Okay, could you give us an approximation of how many times Mr. Wade visited you at the condo between the time you moved in and prior to November 1 of 2020? I don't think often, but I don't, rem I don't want to speculate. Can we say more than five, more than 10? I'm gonna tell you the problem I'm having here. Let's say more than 10, but I'm not sure that that's even accurate. Uh, he certainly has come and picked me up, gone and grabbed some food to eat. Uh, I don't remember him being in that condo a lot. Okay, that's your I, I don't, I'm sorry. You want a number and what I don't want to do. giving me your, your current and best recollection is all I'm asking for. That's all I can give you, sir. How many times did any of the prosecution team, how, long, how many times did Anna Cross come to that condo between the time you moved in and November 1st of 2021? I don't think Anna's ever been to that condo. What about any other prosecutor that's involved in the prosecution of this case? I don't think any of them have. Just Mr. Wade? That's correct, sir. <clears throat> but it was a lonely time. Oh, my God. That, yeah, that 2021, uh, 
I have a lot of guilt about this time period in my life. Let me tell you why. But it, yes, it was a lonely time. Okay. I was very appreciative to the citizens for giving me this responsibility and this duty. But what I very, very quickly learned is that this is a very isolating job. And 2021 was a lonely time. I turned 50 in 2021. That's probably one of the worst birthdays I've ever had. I, I spent it alone. So I have a clear recollection of 2021 being lonely. Okay. Did Mr. Wade ever um, visit you at the condo, the time period I'm talking about, prior to November of 2021, when Ms. Yerty was at the condo? So Ms. Yerty and me, were, we didn't share the condo at the same time. So the answer would be no. Well, we never stayed there together, so it's an well, impossibility. Saying, it's an impossibility. Yeah. Okay. Now, Ms. So that you, Ms. Yerty, because we need to get clarification on this. Ms. Yerty stayed in that place. There may have been a time that me and Mr. Wade visited, like went and saw Ms. Yerdy, but me and Ms. Yerdy never lived there together. Just so we're clear. Well, maybe that was clear, but I'm going to have to try again. Okay. Was Ms. Yerdy still living in the condo when you moved in? Not a day. Okay. So what I'm talking misrepresentation in this. We never lived together. I, I never lived with Ms. Yerdy. My question, though, I'm trying to understand okay. that after you moved in, to the condo. Miss Yerty had been, she was out of the condo, right? She got a house. Uh, that, that, that's all I'm asking. She's not in the condo. She is, n we never stay, Miss Yerty and I never stay a day together in the condo. Okay. All of her stuff was out of the condo and all my stuff, some of my stuff, not all of it obviously, was moved into the condo. So we never stayed there together. No, sir. All right. So when I ask you about Mr. Wade visiting the condo, Yes. When you were staying there. Yes. Miss Yerty wasn't staying there, correct? That would be correct, yes. She wouldn't be at the condo, correct? No, she would not have been. It would be you and Mr. Wade alone at the condo, correct? Yes. That is, there weren't any other witnesses to Mr. Wade and you at the condo, correct? Yes. No security, none of your security detail. Without object, she said it was just her and Mr. Wade. You made your point, Mr. Sado. Let's move on to the next one. Yes, Your Honor. Who in the prosecution team prior to, I guess, the motion being filed by um, Defendant Ro Roman, who in the prosecution team knew of your personal relationship, and now I'm talking romantic, with Mr. Wade? So, sir. I am extremely private. All I ask no, no, is no, who no. knew? It, it's not, a, if you, the answer is no one knew, that's fine. No, I no. ask you who knew. You answer Let me it, just answer it and then explain this, Willis. I am very private. When I supervised Mr. Body and Mr. McAfee, they didn't know who I was dating, but I can assure you I was dating somebody. So that I kept something private, that's my private life, is not any mystery to anyone. It's, it's 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 like a, a woman doesn't have the right to keep her private life private, and I'm speaking on this because there have been all these in, intimations. You just haven't answered the question, Ms. Willis. I'm sorry. What was the question, Your Honor? Is there anyone else who knew about it, and then you can explain? I I don't know. I don't think so. I certainly didn't um, go out telling my business to the world. Okay, so. The best of your recollection, you didn't inform anyone on the prosecution team that the individual that you had chosen to lead the prosecution team had a personal relationship with you. So is that correct? That's inaccurate. Your, your question is inaccurate. What? Because you, you stated that the person I chose, we had a personal relationship. So we had a friendship. We have, to, we have all these distinguishing factors. Remember, when I chose him in November of 21, First of all, let's get this straight. Mr. Wade was not actually my first choice. That's no insult to him. Yeah, no, no, it is. You, because of the way you phrased the question, you said, when I chose him, I didn't inform people of a personal relationship. We have defined personal as romantic. It is an inaccurate way to state the question. Then I will as, certainly restate it so it is very accurate. Okay, very and please do not yell at me. <clears throat> you hired Mr. Wade for the first time on November 1st of 2021, correct? Of 2021, yes, okay. sir. Your testimony is, whether one accepts it or not, your testimony is <clears throat> that at the time you hired Mr. Wade, there had never been a romantic relationship 
with Mr. Wade before you hired him, correct? Yes, my testimony is that we were very good friends, but not, but we're talking about a sex, so let's just don't... Well, no, I'm not talking about, I'm saying romantic relationship doesn't necessarily have to be just sex. Well, it can I be dating, it can be holding hands, it can be any of those things that one might call romantic. I'm asking you whether or not prior to November 1st of 2021, there was a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade. It's very simple. It's either a yes or a no. I don't consider my relationship with him to be romantic before that. I'm not a hand holder, so no. Okay, that's fine. Now, let's move beyond November 1st of 2020. Yes. 2021, excuse me. If I understand your testimony, there was no romantic relationship with Mr. Wade until early in 2022, whether it be January or February or March, early in 2022, correct? I would say sometime between February and April. Yes, sir. All right. Now I'm asking you about that time period when it became romantic. Yes, okay? sir. Thank you. Okay. You didn't see the need, if I understand, to tell any of the people on the prosecution team when you had established a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade, that the lead prosecutor, that is the people, the man that was basically giving orders to others, was dating or having a romantic relationship with you, correct? I'm going to object to relevance at this point, Your Honor. This is not relevant. relevance. It, just to, to, to prove or attempting to show that there is an issue on the credibility about the relationship, the failure to have informed anyone, anyone on her team that she was having a romantic relationship with the lead prosecutor, I suggest gives rise to that inference. That's the rub of this. The inference that... The inference that, that they were concealing this because it was not as it, it's been characterized to the court, and that it, in fact, it started earlier than what they say. All right, overall, let's sit down. I just want to make sure that we're clear from at least 2020, me and Mr. Wade were friends, at least that time period. Okay, I'm not talking okay, about- so No, 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 I just, I want to be clear because my credibility is being evaluated here, right? We were friends, we hung out prior to November of 2021. In November of 2021, I hired him. I do not consider our relationship to have become romantic until early of 2022. Because I don't know a date and time, I'm saying sometime between February and April of 2022, and very early April of 2022, because I know that trip that I discussed with you was like the first week of 2022, that the relationship had become romantic. I hope that answered your question, but I can't have it where, you know, we're saying something differently. All right, so you've established the timeline, as you put it. The question originally was, uh, at the time, at that time, did you tell any other prosecutors uh, on the prosecution? I never tell people at work who I'm dating. All right. Mr. Sato. Okay. Did you take any trips to D.C. with Mr. Wade? Never. Did you ever, did you take, okay, so do you have no, what I would call personal trips or business trips to D.C. with Mr. Wade? I never went to D.C. with Mr. Wade, personal, business, otherwise, never. Okay, so I've never been in the District of Columbia with Mr. Wade or Maryland, Virginia, the DMV, as they call it. So as I understand it, just to be clear, any trips that you would have taken to see D.C. That was, would a not have that was a pretty clear answer. Huh? That was a pretty clear answer. No. She just said no. Twice. So you have a variation or something new to bring up? I'll ask it and we'll see. Did you take trips to D.C.? that were non-business during the time period that this case or this matter was under investigation. I'm going to object as to relevance as it relates to the matter that we're here before your honor. Today. Well, again, the, the question already asked is, did you take personal or business trips? She said. But, I, but that was with Mr. Wade. Business. That was with Mr. Wade. This I asked her alone whether she took. Okay. What's the relevance? And what would be the relevance of that? I'm trying to understand whether or not we, we have an ability to show a personal trip in which Mr. Wade is there at the same time. I understand her answer, okay? I understand her answer, but we have documents, we have records that- Your Honor, I'm gonna okay. to the documents, the things that 
Well, this could be something that's maybe not part of the record yet, but if he has a, I think there have been other things discussed in this case, and they have evidence that Mr. Wade may have been in D.C. at the same time. If you want to ask about that exact specific date, Mr. Sadon, you can do that. I have a I, reference to the court that that was not asked of Mr. Wade, uh, anything about any trips to D.C. Sure. And so that's going to limit its uh, merit and impact and on credibility. So, Mr. Sadon, ask the question. So, so there, I understand your testimony is you never took a trip to D.C., with Mr. Wade. That's correct. Personal or business. That's correct. Were you ever in D.C. at the same time as Mr. Wade? I was not. On personal or business? No, me and Mr. Wade have not been to D.C. at the same time. However, uh, since Mr. Wade has been on this case, he's been to D.C. Since Mr. Wade has been on to this, this case, I've been to D.C. What has not happened is we have not been in the District of Columbia at the same time. Now, the only thing I'm not sure about with what you asked me is if I've been to D.C. personally, because I've got a lot of personal friends in that area, but I know that I um, have been to D.C. Uh, I did an interview at Howard University. I went to D.C. for that. Seems like I've been to D.C. one other time. Oh, I went to D.C. for the Global Summit. Actually, yeah, those were two separate trips. My next question is based on her opening the door, and therefore I'll just ask it, and Your Honor can decide whether or not it's appropriate. When you went to D.C., did you go to the White House? Okay. I did not go to the White House. No. Well, apparently I'm going to get the answer anyhow. There you have it. Next question. Okay. You indicated your best recollection was that your relationship with Mr. Wade, the romantic relationship, uh, ended, um, you left it in August of 2023. That sound right? That's the hard conversation. That's not the. Uh, We've covered this. Next question. And you characterize it as a tough conversation, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to get into the conversation per we se. You should. Well, if he doesn't want to, we won't go there. So, Mr. Sadon, next question. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to say no when you've got that opportunity. But all I'm going to say is it was it pre indictment? In this case, so we know the timeline that the indictment was delivered. Okay. Well, but, and, and, and so that we're so clear, the okay. physical relationship ended pre-indictment. And is that when you were talking about the tough conversation? But I, the phys I'm not sure that the tough conversation didn't happen until after. But the physical relationship. So I'm sure if you ask Mr. Wade, because he's a male, he would say we ended June or July because physical contact ended then. Just in my mind, being a woman, it's over when you have that, like, hard conversation. That's, I just think women and men think differently. And I think the answer, Mr. Sado, to your question was she's not sure whether it was before or after the indictment. Well, I'm, not, I'm not sure that that was her answer, but let's see if I can get specific. Okay. That is what I said. That's what I said. I'll let you. Next question, Mr. Sado. If you need to clarify. Want to say one more? One. The romantic relationship ended before the indictment was returned, yes or no? To a man, yes. Well, to a man, yes. To you, no? She, she's explained this, right. Mr. Sadow. She's explained this. <laughs> and did the, and the, did the forthcoming indictment have anything to do with that? Ooh. Or was it just a coincidence? <clears throat> Mr. Let's go on and have the conversation. I just ask you whether or not it was a coincidence. It had absolutely nothing to do with this. It's interesting that we're here about this money. Mr. Wade is used to women that, uh, as he told me one time, the only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich. We would have brutal arguments about the fact that I am your equal. I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan. A man is a companion. And so there was tension always in our relationship, which is why I was give him his money back. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. Is there anything else you would like to add to that? No. Sure. But I'm sure we'll talk about it further. No, we're not going to talk about it further. I... All right, no back and forth, Mr. Sadown. Next question. Uh, my next question is something that I would, that has to do with the, what I've characterized as the church speech. Let me just tell you what the question is, because I know that's not something. Preserve it for the record. Huh? You can preserve the question for the record, but we'll, then we'll move on. That's correct. Thank you. 
when you gave what I've referred to as the Martin Luther King weekend church speech, you know what I'm referring to? A great honor of mine. That's a historic African-American church. Yes, I do. Okay. Did you have handwritten notes with you that you were reading from during the speech? And, yeah. and on second thought, Mr. Sadow, because you might have a number of questions about this, why don't we just bullet point what you would want to cover on this to preserve for the record, and then we'll move on to the next topic. Okay. Since I had laid out before that the forensic misconduct isn't a subject so do I, of the do I not get an answer for that? That's, That's right. Okay. Uh, did you read your speech? Well, no, Mr. Sadow, for everything related to any forensic Oh, you just want to stay out of it now? We're just not, it's, we can do it in a bullet form if you just want to cover what you would have asked, but it's not in a question and answer format. Okay, so I should do that at this point or do it sure. when you're ready? We can do it right now, so it's fresh right, on I'm going to ask her about, did she prepare the speech? Did she have notes on the speech? Did she read the speech? Um, when did she do this? When did she write the speech? Who was she referring to when she was talking about um, others? Who was she referring to when she said they? Who she was referring to when she spoke in terms of their, that is, their, I would their, love to answer those questions. Well, Ms. Willis, uh, you could certainly do that in some other format. But for today, that's uh, what we decided we're not going to cover. Who was she talking about that was playing the race card and why she didn't tell the people at the church that she, was, that she had had a personal slash romantic relationship with the I'll do respect the way it was characterized, the black man that she was referring to, and was the black man she refer, referring to, was that Mr. Wade? Okay. That's that area of inquiry. Noted for the record, Mr. Sadow. Next topic. Okay. I realize that you've testified that you have no records um, that with regard to cash payments. Yes. Correct? Mm hmm would your bank records reflect that you withdrew cash from your bank accounts during the time period of 2020, 2021, 2022, or 2023? I'm not asking you, I'm just asking whether they would reflect that you withdrew cash from any of your bank accounts. Uh, so the exact amounts? No, nope. just but yeah, that of course, you did. Of course, I withdrew money throughout that time period, throughout my life. I've, I've withdrawn money from the bank, yes, of course. Talking about cash, from that is that you go to cash, a bank right. or you go to an ATM cash. and you take cash out. Either that way or you go to Publix and you overpay or you go to another store and you overpay. So, yes, both through that, yes, uh, of course they would reflect that at times. Okay, and so those records, if we had them, would show that, correct? That throughout the course of my life, I took no, no, out money. From, I, I was very specific. I said, yes, during the course of that time period, I would have taken money out. Yes. So, do you have a problem with? Re I absolutely. So, yes. You don't want the bank records to be made available I, for the court and the court alone. I'm going to object this to the relevance, and this has already been addressed earlier as it relates to other records. This is an improper line of question, questioning. He's doing it. For the purpose of harassment, right, Your Honor. Uh, I'm just going to sustain it on relevance. Uh, Mr. Okay. Sadow, that's something you want to follow up privately? Uh, you can do that. Okay. Uh, last area, briefly. Yes, sir. You had contact with Mr. Wade in the tw year 2020, correct? Ooh. Um, I had some contact with Mr. Wade. Would you explain when you say some contact? Please tell us the con talk about 2020. I had some contact with Mr. Wade in 2020. Um, one of the reasons your allegations are so preposterous or Miss Merchants that you have joined is. Ma'am, no, no, I no, no, didn't no, no, ask no. you about the allegations. I asked you about your contact. That's all I ask you. Okay. I appreciate that, that you want to say something, but I'm interested in, did you have contacts with Mr. Wade in 2020? And your answer so far has been yes, correct? very limited contact because um mr wade had a form of cancer that makes your allegations somewhat ridiculous and i do ap appreciate the characterization I'm not gonna emasculate a black man but i'm, I'm just telling you i'm that sorry what i'm not going to emasculate a black man did you understand that all right well, i don't think we should discuss track. further mr Seda, next question trying to your honor <clears throat> would you tell us on the occasions in 2020 that you had 
contact with Mr. Wade. I'm sorry, I thought I had answered that. Yes, yes, sir, there were times in 2020 I had contact, but 2020 was a year I was running for office. It was a year that he was going through some serious medical issues, and I did not have much contact, but I certainly had contact with him in 2020. Did you it go out to eat with him? Maybe, probably. Did you, did you visit him in any location, his office? Or did he visit you in your office in 2020? I am sure he, uh, I'm sure, ooh, that's a very good question. I'm sure he came to 750 in 2020. 750 not, is? Was my office. Okay. Um, not often, but maybe once or twice. Uh, maybe I went to his office once or twice, but Maybe once. And the purpose for going to his office would have been what? Maybe we would have went to Mellow Mushrooms for pizza, or uh, maybe he would have come for lunch. I'm sure we went by each other's office, though, but not often, not a lot. We, we both grinding, trying try, try to but, make but a living. I understand what you've said about the cancer, and I'm not going into that. But when you were going out with him to restaurants, or when he would come to your office, right? Those were not sterile environments, were they? Oh, very sterile because it was... The restaurants were sterile environments? A lot of times we wouldn't eat there. We would pick up something and go in, but they were... Do you, you're, I'm, li I'm listening to you. You pick yeah. up and take it to where? Maybe eat at our office, but it did not happen much. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. And my office in 2020, nobody was coming in. I was stir crazy, so I would still go into my office. If you remember... When I started this, I said, I am not even sure if we came to each other's offices, but I am trying to be over cautious. So I think I can recall him at 750 a couple of times. Um, I just think I can recall him at 750 once, but let's say twice. I have seen his office. I remember all the awards in the lobby, but I'm not sure in 2020, I, I went. I'm not even sure I went in 2020 at all. I just want to tell you, yes, because I'm not sure. But I, I have a, I have a distinct recollection of him at 750. I actually don't have a distinct recollection of me at his office in 2020. But maybe I went to his office in 2020. Maybe. Did you have ongoing phone conversations during 2020 with Mr. Wade? Oh yeah, I talked to. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. No question about that. No question. I talked to him on the phone in 2020. Uh, I understood, and this is, I, maybe I was confused. The Belize trip was for his, his 50th birthday. His 50th birthday, and that was in March. He, he turned 50 March 18th of 2023. If you look at the dates of the trip, I think we were there about six days. Um, we stayed at two different locations. Um, so and you paid for it. 100%. He said, not only, I mean, I paid for the hotel, I paid for the flights, I had a birthday luncheon for him, I paid for massages, I paid for everything. And would those payments be reflected on your credit card? I paid card? for the cash. You cab, paid them in cash? Cabs, cabs. I was telling you all the different things. I'm I at, and I'm asking you whether or not those payments would be reflected on credit card bills of yours. So there was about $500 that I think is reflected on a debit card. I, what my recollection is, I took about four in cash with me to that. Four hundred or four thousand. Four thousand. But I remember I handed him twenty five hundred, and then the rest was just the money we spent. I probably gave three or four hundred dollars to uh, this guy who was a taxi driver. He would drive us every day around the two or three days we went. Took him to eat like it was my it was my trip money. And you had to be clear to end this up. The 4000 that you've just told us. But I didn't give it all to him, remember. I only gave the 2500 to him. I, I didn't ask you that. I was going to ask you that. 4000 is part of your, my words, cash hoard that you had collected over time. Cash what? Hoard, H-O-R-D-E. Oh, I thought you said something different, sir. No, I'm afraid I wouldn't say that. Uh -oh. Any circumstances to you or in court. All right, back on track. The hoard, cash hoard. <laughs> I, I would not classify it at, in that way, but I have money at my house. Yes, sir. And the money, when you had money at your house. My, when I, and look, I'm speaking too loosely. I had money wherever I was staying. So I was not referring to my house in 750. 
I'm saying I had money wherever I was laying my head. Yes, sir. I, that was my fault that I wasn't clear. So when you were at what we said the Yerti condo during the time period we've always discussed, that's where you would keep your cash? When I stayed there, yes. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. I want to see if we can get through a few more defense counsel possible before breaking for today. Mr. Stockton. Madam District Attorney, I'm Alan Stocks, and I don't think we've had the pleasure of meeting. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Um, Madam DA, you described these various trips, and uh, Mr. Sadow asked you about going to Washington. Did you and Mr. Wade go to New York? I've gone to New York. Um, I've gone to New York twice um, since I've been District Attorney. <clears throat> I'm trying to think if it's two or three times. I went to do a domestic violence thing there for sure, and I was honored, and I went to the Apollo there. Those are the only two trips that come to mind. I went. He was not with me. You also said that he was a world traveler and had been on many of the continents. I've been to six. Have you been on any of those continents with him um, besides this one? Uh, where's Belize? What continent is it? I'm not being funny. I don't know. Uh, Let's say with the exception the of... Belize with him. I've been to the Bahamas with him. I've been with Aruba with him. Don't embarrass me. I'm not sure what continents those are on. Whatever continents those are, that's where I've been. I'm sure if I gave it some thought, I would tell you. But whatever continents those are, that I've been to those locations, sir. But not Australia or any other continents? I don't even want to go to Australia. I do know he took a trip in December to Australia. I have no idea, you know. I don't know anything about that trip. When Mr. Wade began working with your office. Yes. He had two other gentlemen that worked in his firm with him. Is that correct? Yes. He, uh, Terrence Bradley worked for him, and Chris Campbell worked not for him. They worked with each other. Did you understand what their partnership arrangement was? I, no. Did he ma ever make you aware of how fees were divided or anything? No. Now... Since you have been district attorney, the two gentlemen that worked with Mr. Wade and his firm, they also had contracts with your office. Is that correct? I probably had two. Oh, I, don't... Well, I don't know if we've covered this in Ms. Willis, but I still don't know what the relevance would be of her testifying but, to this. But I've had about 10 people. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want let's, me to answer or no? Let's figure this out. Judge, respectfully, I, I think based on Mr. Wade's testimony, he had an interest in those contracts. Sure. And then, but how has that been imputed to Ms. Willis? I, I don't know if whether or not she knew she was giving him that benefit. That's what I was trying to explore. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we can start with that question, and then if she doesn't know about it, then the ins and outs of all the contracts wouldn't be quite as relevant. Just to lay a foundation for that, though, I... Let's see where it takes I need to... Go ahead. The, the two gentlemen that were in Mr. Wade's office... Did they have what I think has been referred to as a taint contract? So let me be clear, and I'm, I may get the names wrong. When I first became DA, this, the office was not properly staffed. And so I did, I'm surprised any lawyer would take it, but I did a contract for like $60 an hour to help us out with first appearance. That lasted a few months. Okay, so I can't remember if Bradley or Campbell had that. I'm sure we can have records and I can tell you which one, but I just can't remember now. Um, I like their experience. One had been, Bradley had been a probation officer and a defense attorney. Uh, Campbell had been a police officer and a um, defense attorney. There's a reason I'm telling you this. Then um, that, that contract, like I said, it didn't last long. It was just, I was aggressively hiring, 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 hiring. As Soon as I got where I felt like I had first appearance, enough lawyers for that, I let them go. Then we had what's called a filter contract, but it was not filter for this particular case. I do have a lawyer um, who does the filter for this election interference case. When we're talking about filter the contract they had that neither one of them has any longer, um, I now have another lawyer that does that for me. It was only for 
police brutality cases. It's for what I call the, um, so when I first got to be the DA, I had um, the whole unit was called anti-corruption. It dealt with both elections and police brutality cases. I actually took a trip to Houston and visited the district attorney in Houston. They divided their work up, and I thought the way she was doing it was better than my, me. And so I, I made a civil rights unit. And so they did what we would classify as civil rights cases. Those are specifically the police brutality cases. <laughs> when I first took over, I was told Paul had not filtered five cases. That was a joke. It ended up being the 101 cases. They weren't filtered, which is why I hired two of them. Eventually, we got it down enough that it was one of them. Um, and then um, now I still have one lawyer that does it. But now I've been able to cut those cases down to like 30 can you tell me the and help me understand what the purpose of the filter is? Yes, sir. So what a filter is, is police officers make statements in the line of duty and you are not allowed as the prosecutor to know what those statements are if they're done in the furtherance of their employment. And in fact, if you know what those statements are, you're basically disqualified from the case. You can't have it anymore. So what our policy is, I think I pay them like a $50 flat fee. They pick the case up directly from the GBI because that's where those cases go to and then what they are to do is to re go through the entire file so um, the body cam the uh, which is important because sometimes they'll make a statement to their supervisor on body cam in the police reports where they write things that if it would be easy if it was just some statement of the police officer but what you find out is these statements are embedded in it and so what your filter lawyer does is they go through it they either redact it out electronically or they cross it out and then once it is crossed out then they provide it to my team and then we're able to look at it um that was not being done appropriately when i became district attorney i thought that it had only been so mr howard had some chinese wall thing that i didn't think worked at all uh where allegedly those cases were properly redacted that ended up being a joke um and so the five cases really turned into i'm not going to say all 101 but a vast majority. That is the work that Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell did for me. They did a really good job. All of those cases that we originally came with, they're done. Those cases are, they're not just done for Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell, they're done through my office. But obviously life is not stagnant. There have been new police cases. Um, I do have a lawyer that is doing that work now that doesn't work for me, that's same kind of deal. I have another lawyer that does filtering for this case completely separate so in the same private office you had a filter contract then you had somebody else having handling first appearances and so forth and then you had a special prosecutor is that correct i'm i'm just not ultimately the answer to your question is yes but i'm not sure that they did it at the same time the first appearance contract was either 60 or 90 dollars i don't know really how i convinced them to be able to take that but i think because it was for such a short amount of time and then i think i pay my filter lawyers which i still don't know how i get away with about 150 an hour and i want you to understand the ag pay special prosecutors $1,000 an hour. So um, I'm a tough negotiator. Paul was paying people up to $375 an hour. Um, I won't pay anyone more than $250 is my max. I have a lot of lawyers that, a lot for what I have, that work at $250 and I cap them every month. You can't go past a certain amount of hours. Would you agree that if, if Mr. Wade and the two other gentlemen that were in his firm were splitting fees in equal thirds, would you agree that he would benefit from the tank contract and also from the other first appearance contract? I, w I would agree he would make money, yet so to make money is a benefit. Judge thought, all got. Mr. Durham, if you're still with us on Zoom. No question, Your Honor. Mr. McDougald. I do have a couple, Your Honor, but it's a little awkward from back here. If you want uh, to yeah, why don't you go ahead and make your way up. Good afternoon, Ms. Wills. How are you doing? 
I'm very well. How are you, Mr. McDougal? I think this is our first in-person meeting, correct? Second. Second? Well, I apologize for not remembering you more clear. That's quite all right. Um, I'm referring now to exhibit number 21. Yes, sir. Which was your financial disclosure form for 2022. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and it has a question which requires you to disclose any gifts or favors from a single prohibited source in the aggregate amount of $100 or more. Do you see that? I don't, but I believe you. It would be on page two in the middle, paragraph number three. Yes. And what is your understanding of a prohibited source for purposes of this form? I believe there's some classification of somebody you like don't have a personal relationship with that gives you a hundred dollars. If, All right, if you look bought, under, under there at subparagraph two, Romanet two, it defines it as someone that you know or should know is seeking to do or is doing business with the county, correct? Yes, but I, yes, let me, yes. That includes Mr. Wade as of the date you filled out this form, correct? Yes, but he never gave me a gift of $100 or more. Um, the only thing that I would say maybe went over that, but I don't think it ever did, is if we went to dinner and my meal was $100, but I don't think I've ever eaten $100 worth of food at a restaurant because I, I would not pay him back if we went to lunch or went to dinner. Um, but trips, I paid him back for. You know, I never thought about the money until y'all brought it up. And I would be less than honest. It says I was giving him the money back because I was the district attorney. Um, I didn't take gifts from him um, f for a lot of personal reasons. Anyway, I did not take gifts from him. And so your reason for not disclosing any gifts from Mr. Wade on exhibit number 21 is that the aggregate amount on a net basis was less than $100 in the year 2022. Is that correct? I did not accept a gift of him of more than $100 in 2022. The one exception to that, if you, because I, I want us to be clear, is we probably went out to eat multiple times in the year if you're considering eating a meal you know because we went out multiple times that probably went to the level of more than a hundred dollars but if, if we're doing tit for tat like that I probably paid for as many meals as he paid for and so I did not receive any gifts from him the question on the form I understand the, the question. aggregate in excess of $100. And your testimony is that you did Mr. not McDougall. receive in the aggregate more than $100. All right, Mr. McDougal, you can sit down now. I don't believe she answered that question, Your Honor. She answered as to specific individual right, gifts. And you're not listening to my answer either, so we're done. Very well. Okay. Mr. Rice. No further questions. Miss, uh, Mr. Gillen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, a few questions here. Uh, I want to, you, you saw the book here, uh, Find Me the Votes. That, that was shown to you, correct? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I would like to just uh, tender this as an exhibit, uh, number 22. Is, your, is that your copy? It is. All right. What exhibit is that going to be? 22. All right. I'm making the con the, uh, the is that evidentiary contribution here um, to this. Now, well, I guess the, you're, you're tendering it. Is it with the um, position of the state? I'm going to object this to the relevance at this point. As to, I mean, we haven't, there's no relevance to the disclosure of this point. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gillen, are you are using this to confront Could her with prior statements? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And statements that she made concerning her concerning her financial situation and laying the foundation for that, and that she gave these interviews uh, to the authors. And so this would uh, document that. Don't ask her, uh, get this in the record, ask her questions about it. Uh, we'll, we could mark it for impeachment purposes. I'm a little wary of entering an entire 300-page book because I don't know exactly what every single line, if it would pass 
hearsay or relevance or et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think it needs to be admitted as a an actual evidence for the record for you to do what you need to do with it. So, well, uh, Your Honor, I, I understand. <laughs> I, I just yeah. would it's, uh, it's marked again. Exhibit Twenty Two, and I'll let you. We'll move from there. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Now, you were asked a little bit about this bill before, correct? I think Mrs. Mrs. Merchant. Mrs. Merchant did. Asked me some questions, yes. And, and you gave about, what, about six interviews to the authors of this book in the sit-down? No, sir. You didn't? Uh, and no. The, was she, it, she answered how many interviews she gave, in her opinion. How many, in your opinion, do you believe you gave, and how long did they last? Two to three, maybe 20, 30 minutes. You, you, so your testimony is at most... Do you think that you gave maybe an hour to an hour and a half's interview to the authors of this book? Oh, you mean in total? In total, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Anywhere between n definitely not more than two-ish hours. Okay. But you also were telling when, when they were the, the title of the book, of course, is a hard-charging Georgia prosecutor, a rogue president, and the plot to steal American election. You, yes, you, you've seen I that. What's, why is the title of the book relevant, sir? And I why had no... You, and then I'm going to ask her the, whether or not that was the, the theme that they gave her when they talked with her. Yes, what the thing gave her? What do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, because they were they were sat down and they told her why they were there to interview her. And why, and why does that matter? Well, I think it matters because it shows but the, they, they want her to give her version of what uh, her life story is. This is a life, almost sure. a life story of her. So that's why it's relevant. But if the court thinks it's not, then no, no, it's it, it could be relevant to your issue of the forensic misconduct that has been alleged, and maybe some of the the motives at play when it comes to forensic misconduct. But I'm not seeing again what we're here for today was the relationship and/or any financial elements of it. Correct. Well, I think it clearly relevant to the uh, forensic misconduct, also relevant to the personal interest in terms of the finances. Let me. If I didn't I make ten cent off that book. Pardon me. I didn't make 10 cents off that book. Didn't I didn't ask whether you made any money. Okay, I just... I uh, didn't ask whether you made any money. Do you have any other statements that she hadn't already been confronted with by Ms. Merchant? Well, other than I want to, to, to focus on when you were telling them about your financial straits and you're living kind of month to month, uh, that is what your financial status was back in... 2018 after your election. Mr. Gunn, we, we covered that at length. And I'm, you just, you're at the end of the line. I'm sorry about that, but we've got to find new ground. Well, uh, you know, and, and let, let me move on to, to, to my point here. So the point is that what you're telling us is that uh, you were uh, in financial straits, but really that your testimony today is you had a cash hoard of maybe up to $10,000 in cash where you laid your head at night so that you would dip out and there would be no record of it, correct? That's not what I'm telling you, sir. Well, that's not That's not at all what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is that throughout the course of my life, I have always kept cash in my house. That cash has ranged from times, you know, my father would probably be ashamed of this because he would say it should be more, but that, time, that cash at times has ranged from $500 to maybe $9,000, and he, he would be like, that is not what I told you to do. Um, I've always had that amount of money. What I've told you is that when I travel, you do better negotiating when you travel. If you have cash, you can you go to get the cab. They say, oh, we're going to charge you 300 for the day. Well, I got American cash. Will you take it for 150 And so it's my practice to take money when I travel. We're not talking about a whole lot of money. We're going to the Bahamas. 1500 in cash is in my pocket or at the most 2500 Belize was actually probably the most money I've ever taken. And it was taken because it was a big deal. My 50th birthday sucked. His 50th birthday, it sucked. It was terrible. No. Your Honor, and so I'd like to get I, back to, to some questions here. I'm, about I'm trying to answer it. The narrative. I think it would help if we So, so let's, 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 let's move to the specific yes or no's here. Have you told us today that you would keep uh, a cash hoard in your residence up to about $9,000? Yes or no? And, and throughout the course of my adult life. And so let's even be more specific than that. Probably from the time... Your Honor, I'm only asking for yes or no rather sure. than... But I, but we, and we have already covered this, so I but yeah, but get I'm to trying, that point. I'm I know you're laying the foundation, but it's already been laid. So uh, yes. well, the, the filibuster is here. I'm trying to move through the filibuster. Yeah, but, but we're not talking about a lot of... And so it's, it could be 
2000 it could be 1500 it could be 7500 it just depends on how what you're doing at that time what i'm telling you is when i traveled i took cash I find that when you travel, especially to foreign countries, the American dollar does well, and it's good to have cash. You can negotiate with the taxi driver, with the jet skis, with the, uh, and it's not a lot of money we're talking about. Your Honor, okay, we, understood, we need Ms. To, Wells. We need let's to get to, the, let's get to a question, Mr. Gilman. Um, and so you have cash in your house, mm -hmm. but you had a lien, uh, a, a tax lien on your property. Is that right? I don't believe I had a tax lien on my property. You didn't have a tax lien on your property. You got to you talk up a lot, Mr. Huh? Okay, we we already covered that, Mr. Gillen. I need new ground here. I'm, I'm asking the question. Of, uh, I'm trying to figure out how someone can have the, uh, have a tax lien. Then ask that question. But not use the money that they allegedly said they have. Well, I think Ms. Merchant asked that exact same question. She said she didn't use the money to pay her tax lien. So what's your question? That's new. So so I, I was going to build on that to say no more uh, building. It's already built. All right. It's the same way you pay a bill. So just, just put it's the a, top on it if you need to, okay? It's the same way you owe a bill and go shopping. Well, uh, now, you know, have you ever used, did you say earlier the used cash app? I, when I would pay Robin Bryant, I used cash app. What is cash app for the record? I don't need to know that for the record. Let's keep going. Well, so uh, if you're paying Robin with cash app, why aren't you paying, uh, allegedly paying Mr. Uh, There's no alleged here. Why aren't you paying allegedly Mr. Wade with Cash App? I don't think Mr. Wade does Cash App. Did you ask him? I think he's told me he doesn't do Cash App. Okay, so that's the reason why you didn't use Cash App. He's sitting next to me. I hand him the money. Because there would be a record in Cash App of your making payments, correct? Yes, right. but I didn't think that I was making a record in a personal relationship. Because when you're filing your, and, and I know that I'm going to you know, move into this, uh, financial statement here. You were asked uh, just a second ago about your non-disclosure form, or your, excuse me, your disclosure form of a, an Exhibit 21, where um, we agree that Mr. Wade is a prohibited source, correct? I don't, I, what I agree to is, I don't believe he's given me gifts. You, you would like to classify these trips as gifts, but I've always paid my fair share on these trips, so I did not look at them as gifts. I don't think that what this is disclosing, and they can tell me if they mean something different, I don't think it means that if you go to dinner with somebody over the course of a year and it gets to 100, you're supposed to report it. If my understanding of that is wrong, um, I've probably been to lunches with a couple of people that over the course of a year they paid, I paid. Let, let, let me, let, prohibited source means. We already uh, went over this, Mr. Gillen. Mr. McDougall. Well, Your Honor, I have to, I have to uh, lay the foundation here before I can follow up with my uh, next question. I, I, don't, I don't know why you, can't, you have to. Well, it's okay. the questions uh, have been made. Then your two, uh, tw uh, 2022 disclosure form did not list any of the thousands and thousands of dollars that Mr. Wade li uh, paid for on trips that you were on. Objection. Isn't that correct? That's because Mr. Wade was paid that money back, or he was paid uh, due to the fact that I bought the plane ticket or I paid for the hotel. There, there was never money that he gave me. That, that wasn't the nature of our relationship. You know, there's so many men, and Mr. Wade is one of them, where the nature of the relationship is they're just paying a woman. The nature of our relationship is companionship and friendship. Despite the way people would like to paint certain women, it's just not true. Final question. And not a single solitary documentary piece of that is showing that you have withdrawn the cash to pay Thank you, Mr. That? That's not accurate. Thank you. Okay, Mr. McCulloch, on behalf of Mr. Floyd. All right, and uh, Mr. Cromwell, on behalf of Ms. Latham. Um, the great thing about coming last is most of your questions. I have one question, Ms. Willis. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. In the time period between February of 2021 and January of 2022, while you were staying at the Yurdy Convent, did your father ever come and visit you during that time period at the Yurdy Convent? He did not. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Ms. Cross, I would imagine you have a number of topics to cover with Ms. Willis that will take more than 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I do. Okay. Then I think we've reached a stopping point for today. And so, uh, Ms. Willis, I'd ask you if you could step
sent down now, and I'd uh, also remind you that uh, you're not to discuss your testimony or uh, that of any other witness until the long morning. We'll be back here, and we'll begin again at 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? Uh, we'll do 9 a.m. this time tomorrow. Before we uh, recess for today, I want to check in on logistics, and uh, I'll ask Ms. Merchant. Um, once the testimony of Ms. Willis has concluded, uh, how many other witnesses do you anticipate calling? Um, We can we can handle that now. Ms. Willis, you can step you can step down. You're done for the day. You want me to leave the courtroom? Uh, or you can sit at the council table. We don't we don't need you in the witness box. Uh, all right, so two witnesses and then querying other defense counsel. Um, I know uh, Mr. Gillen had, there was a potential witness that was objected to by the state, so there's another one there. And we can talk about that. Were there any other witnesses anticipated from any defense counsel? All right, seeing no show of hands.